All right, today we're going to be taking a look at KISS Ultra. We're going to be looking at it on its default, and then we're going to be comparing that against FETTEC tuned, Ultra tuned, and then Betaflight tuned, all in the same quad. So when flying, not everybody might realize, but when you're kind of taking it easy and just kind of skating around, all firmware is really just going to follow your rates. It's really the difficult stuff that's going to differentiate between firmwares. That's stepped inputs, sharp moves. How does it react to sharp moves? How does it react to prop wash, wind, outside influences, things of that nature? That's really what pushes the tune, which pushes the firmware. When you're going to tune a quad, you're trying to make the flight performance better than some default for these specific things. Maybe it has bounce back. Maybe it's a little throbbly. Maybe it's a little drifty. Uh, maybe it gets pushed around by the wind a little too much, or maybe the prop wash handling is really not that good. So, you know, there's different presets and different tunes to help you out with that. And in different firmwares, there's all kinds of different settings. And the really the differentiator between firmwares is, hey, if you tune it all the way to its nth degree, how well can it perform? Does it firmware A actually perform better or worse than firmware B once it's all fully tuned? So today we're going to look at that. So when applying custom tuning to three different firmwares, how do we meet the goal of having similar tunes on each of those? Well, we simply do that by following the same standard procedure on tuning. That's raising your D term up as high as you can on each of those, then P term up as high as you can without getting any bounce back, and then I term as high as you can without getting any I term induced bounce back, and you know making sure I term's not so low that you get any drift. So we just follow those same procedures and we listen to the quad. So we're listening, you know, it's the same hardware. So it doesn't really matter what the numbers are, what firmware you're on. You just use the same exact quad and then you can apply those same procedures and get the basically the same tune. The, the tune, the machine will tell you what the numbers need to be on each three firmwares to get as close as you can to the same results. So the first up is FETTEC. These are the parameters I ended up with after custom tuning it. You can see my P's 1.5, I's, and then D's, and then I just have those the same for pitch and roll. And then here's what I have over here. FETTEC also has a tuning tab, and you can see in there some of the other parameters that I had. I think these are mostly, if I recall correctly, yeah, these are just the five inch preset. So I didn't end up messing with those all too much. I might have raised this eye fall a little bit, and, and that's kind of about it. So this is what we had for the custom tune for FETTEC. And then for Ultra, we ran that twice. We ran that first on the default, which is on the over here. And then we ran that on my custom tune, which is over here. It really maxes out the D gains as high as they can go. Then finally for beta flight, these were the settings. So we just increased tracking a little bit, uh, turned off uh, dynamic damping, and then uh, yeah, just crank that master multiplier way up. This is what we had for the filter settings here. And then on KISS, we had the filter set to high. And on FETTEC, the filter or the frame strength was set to medium on that one. Now, when we roll the HD for each, I'm going to have these trace templates shown over the top of the screen. These will show you the roll, pitch, and yaw axis. The green line is the sticks, and the blue line is the gyro. So ideally, the you know the, the gyro stays near the blue line or on the blue line. You're going to see some deviations like here. You're going to see prop wash and whatnot. And then you'll see some different shapes and how that firmware. So when you see like a bobble in the HD, you'll see that bobble by the blue line coming off the green line. Um, you prop wash, you'll see it, you know, obviously shaking. And then you'll see this, this, uh, this is the prop wash here. When you see bounce back at the end of the flip or roll, you'll see that here. You'll see as the pitch command here is coming back down to zero, you'll see the gyro goes bouncing down and then back up and then coming back. So that's that bounce back. You're going to see it in the HD and then you'll see it on these trace overlays as well. Ignore this graphic up here. I keep forgetting to turn that off. You have these sticks that these represent the what the black box is seeing for these green lines. And then you can you know, just see my sticks right there on the screen as well. So let's get into it. The first test we're going to have is bounce back, then drift, then throbbles, then prop wash. Keep an eye down here on the lower left for which firmware it is and if it's on default or tuned. Flips and rolls. Looks like bounce back is pretty good.
That's no bounce back. Uh, it's not bad. That's not bad. It's not bad. It's way better than this light. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you're pushing it. It's not. It's better than Kiss Legacy. Uh, it's default. So this is the. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. Drift looks good when it doesn't hit that protection thing or whatever it is. It's working with some of the devs. It seems like this thing is a bug I can, that I can completely induce. But my nose hold is better. So let's see here. Nose hold is good except for the throttle part. See that? Now it doesn't drift off to the side anymore. And that is no drift. Let's see throttles. Yeah, it's, it's, it's. <laughs> That's nose hold, baby. Let's give it the wash test. Pretty good. Not too bad. And we are logging beta flight on this and kiss. Yeah, prop wash looks okay. Give it the wash test, baby. Yeah, I'd say my, yeah, definitely. My custom tune. It's definitely doing better for prop wash. What you expect out of a custom tune. Let's check out Wash, baby. So what did you think? Well, let's go over a couple things that I've noticed. So I'm going to skip over the Ultra just on its default. I was just showing that because people that fly Ultra will say that my tune's no good, that the, def you know, the default or Crunk's Golden is better. And you can see that that's not the case for this quad. And I'm not trying to make a preset here. I'm just trying to get the optimal flight performance out of this quad uh, for all three firmwares. So moving right on to the FetTech tuned. What I've noticed for FetTech, there's, there's really two things. Uh, one, there's a bug that I talked about there, where as you drop throttle real quick, it kind of just loses authority and control. Um, 
working with the devs, I think that's will be fixed up fairly soon. But if you have noticed that, that's not you. That's something real. Um, and has to deal with like uh, there's a, some detection thing that I think they were saying like when it detects when it hits the ground, probably to drop the pit of the so other doesn't bounce, and it's detecting that in the air when you drop the throttle real quick. So yeah, yeah, they got to fix that up. That aside, that just being a bug, it is alpha firmware. The other thing that I've noticed is it's real kind of bobbly on the axes that aren't doing the sharp move. So if you're doing a roll, the pitch axis is kind of bobbly, and you can kind of see it here. You can, hopefully you could see that in the HD, but you can see it here in the traces, how much bobble there is on the pitch access when I'm doing a sharp roll move. Now, again, I can't have the detains any higher because uh, any higher than this, they flutter. I have them at uh, 5.5, I think it was. Uh, I know it's six, definitely I had them at six and it's fluttery all over the place. Uh, so in the P gains, I can't have any higher because then I will get bounce back from P gain. Trust me, I've tuned it. I have all the information if you'd like to see that, if you don't believe me. So P gain's as high as it can be. I punched up I gain as high as I can get to get that drift and th uh, throbbles the best I can. Um, so yeah, that's the same thing too. And I really can't go any higher on I gain. It's actually a tad little high now. It depends what the priority is, but because you do have some I turn bounce back here that I'm seeing like right in here. Um, with that high I gain. So I might, if I, but if I drop that I gain down now on some of these axes, pitch or roll, then my throbbles and, um, you know, drift might get a little worse. So it's kind of this, it's really tight. It's kind of tough in the, the kind of the KISS ecosystem to, uh, to balance that I turn between those two. That said, Fat Tech does do well when it, that bug doesn't trigger uh, for holding nose and drift and throbbles are pretty good. I would say commensurate with, I, I would say they're a little bit better than uh, than ultra, uh, ultra tuned. So Fat Tech is definitely better than Kiss Legacy for drift control and then throbble control. I think Fat Tech's a little bit better, but it does have that, that kind of that bounciness uh, on the cross axis when you're doing these sharp flips or rolls. Now, Ultra, when it's tuned up, to, you can see you don't get near as much cross bobble when I'm doing this sharp roll move. Um, so it's better in that regard. It has more of this uh, I term overshooting here. You can see this uh, This is with exaggeration on with these lines up here. Uh, so you can't really see it because everything's a spin. So that's, you know, maybe some of that feel stuff. Uh, Conversely, we're gonna make another video in the future. That that goes away if you add braking. So it looks pretty much just like beta flight if you add in braking. And I can get beta flight to pretty much look like this to begin with. So that, that's another video. But yeah, it's definitely seems to be a little bit better uh, when it's tuned to not have that cross access bobble. Drift is looking pretty good when you have that tuned and the eye term is up. It's it's okay. It's not perfect. There's still a little bit of a a thing that it does to compensate but uh, again it's not as good as Fettech but it's it's not horrible but just like Legacy Kiss it kind of suffers uh, from the throbbles and you can see that here in these pitch axes so when I'm doing those throbble moves if you want to go back and see that you know when I'm punching that you'll see uh, you'll see it in the HD of course but then you'll see these trace lines coming off here and that's that's what's kind of nice about the black box overlay so in you know you can see it in the HD between those but then you can actually go back and look at those trace overlays and get an sense for the magnitude difference between you know what you're seeing versus like just guessing you can just see it right in the trace lines now when it comes to prop wash i think they all did pretty well in that order i think kiss ultra might have had a slight edge over fetech in this regard depending on which move you're looking at so you guys can make that choice for yourself but i think kiss ultra was just maybe a tad bit better than fetech on prop wash on the runs that i was doing here so this brings me all to beta flight in beta flight you can see with the flips and rolls uh it's real sharp there's hardly any cross access bobble you can see that right here so it's just real locked in and really just snaps onto those uh flips and rolls for drift beta flight just holds the nose better than the other two um, you just chop off the throttle and it just holds it right on there and then for throttles as well, you can see that was the best. It just kind of holds that nose as you're pumping the throttle. You know, there's some a little bit of movement, but not the the big up and down stuff that you see with Fettech or Kiss Ultra. And then finally, prop wash. I would say that a prop wash was, I, 
I think a little bit better. Uh, I would say it's at least on par, uh, if not a little bit better than uh, Fettech or Kiss Ultra. But uh, again, you guys can see that stuff. I think the bigger difference is, is the throbbles, the drift, and then those uh, flips and rolls. Okay, well, that will do it for me. Um, I'm gonna drop links down in the video description where you can download the logs. I, if anybody wants the HD, you can ask me soon. I usually delete the original footage after I have a video because it's like 30 uh, gigs of data. Um, but if you want those, more than happy to give it out. Uh, all the log data will be I, at that link below. You can check all that kind of stuff out. And I am logging it. I do have logs for Betaflight and KISS, so I have all the KISS logs as well, both ways. Even when Betaflight was flying the quad, KISS was recording the same kind of stuff. I do have some other content I'm gonna be throwing out and up on this topic. Um, I kind of just want to get it out there and be done with this. I want to move on to other things. Um, so be looking forward to that. Uh, we're going to show just uh, how Ultra looks on KISS actual defaults, like KISS defaults, not Ultra defaults. And you can kind of compare and contrast the difference between the two because it they start to line up a lot more than you think. And we also have something on that braking, uh, Ultra brake uh, that it has for, for stuff. And we'll talk about that. Finally, you may hear from uh, KISS fans that, you know, I just have it in for KISS. Well, I, I you saw all the information and data there. You saw the tunes, um, you saw the default, you know, and you saw my Ultra tune was better than that default. Um, I tuned the other two. It's funny because I don't get any of that flack from the FETTECH crowd. I've been working with them. There's actually a, you know, bug report I gave to them on that. There's actually two bugs in KISS. Um, that I didn't pass along yet. The one is that that brake thing only works one direction, not the other direction. Uh, that's that's a bug. And then there's a bug with Express LRS and the Crossfire V2 thing. But nevertheless, uh, so trying to give some feedback. Don't have it in for them. I, what I have it in for is that I want the truth to be out there. And if people are making great flight firmware, they deserve their reels. And in that case, you can see what Betaflight's been doing. I mean, it shouldn't be all that surprising when you have 40 to 50 plus people from around the world working on something versus one or two people, you know, 40, 50 plus science minded people looking at logs, looking at the depth with their only goal is making flight performance better. So, yeah, that's uh, sometimes what the result is. It makes flight performance better and it's the best flying uh, firmware out there. So kudos to the Betaflight uh, project uh, for what those guys have been doing. Again, thanks everybody. Hope this helped. Check out those links below. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, throw them down in the comments. Oh, one last thing. I'm gonna make a preset for Betaflight 4.3 for how to get uh, Betaflight to fly like Ultra or Kiss. Now, it's gonna have the same bad tendencies, but it will have more close to that same, I guess, stick feel, that loose, out of control kind of, I don't know, I mean, <laughs> whatever. It will emulate what I'm seeing in, in the tracking for KISS. It will emulate that. Well, to do that, you have to loosen up some gains and things like that. So it will have more throbbles and all those bad things, but then it should have, I guess, more the same feel. So if you're interested in that, uh, keep an eye out in the uh, repository library, and that will be coming out fairly soon. Again, thanks, everybody, and I hope this helped.